Good morning, YouTube. Good to see you guys all today. Today we are in Worms, Germany, or as Americans like to pronounce it, Worms, Journey. And this is a this is a, a place that is very famous for a special event called the Diet of Worms. Now, I'm sure that that sounds very terrible to all of us who don't know our church history, but I'll explain it to you in a little bit. Check out that church. So beautiful. So our main person of interest for today's video is none other than Martin Luther. No, not the Dr. Martin Luther King from the United States, but the German reformer Martin Luther, who was an Augustinian monk, right? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Augustinian monk. The story of him becoming a monk was actually that he was slotted to become uh, a lawyer. And uh, Martin Luther suffered, as many people did in that era, for a tremendous amount of fear, just trepidation when it came to God. They viewed God as a very angry and terrible, like judging God. And the story is that one evening, as it's raining and thundering, Martin Luther is, uh, is walking about and he is so terrified for his life. The thunder is, is crashing and he fears that he has displeased God so much that he thinks he's about to die. So in a moment of panic, he prays, Lord, save me and I will become a monk. Well, clearly Martin Luther didn't die and Martin Luther made good on his promise and became a monk, much to the dismay of his father, who, uh, you know, sacrificed quite a bit so that Martin Luther could have an education. So right behind me is a series of statues, of course, the most notable uh, in the center there is Martin Luther, since we are in Germany, but there's also a well-known reformers, uh, many that I haven't been able to share the story with, but there's one that you'll recognize. This is a statue of John Huss, the guy that we were talking about in the previous video. Now we have here, You'll notice on the outside of the square, there are many women represented, and each of these represents a different city that actually joined the Reformation. So this guy right behind me is Peter Waldo. You guys will remember several videos ago when we went to the Waldensian Valley, those people hiding up in the valleys. This is the guy that uh, the Waldensians were named after, Peter Waldo. And I think there's, that's also the inspiration for the Where's Waldo series, the guy that's always hiding around. The Waldensians, of course, being very famous for being able to evade capture and hiding in the mountains. So as far as monks were concerned, Martin Luther was actually a really good monk. Uh, he rose the ranks rather quickly. He was a, a sought after speaker and teacher, ended up teaching at several universities because he had a, an ability to capture the minds of the common person to help them to just really seek after spiritual things. But over time, Martin Luther started to see uh, a lot of practices that he wasn't very fond of. For example, he saw like priests literally combining up with like prostitutes and then just like a lot of really questionable things. Basically things that no one today would be comfortable with their pastors doing. But the main thing that he was concerned about was this practice of selling what was called indulgences. You see, in those times, many people believed that in order to be accepted by God, in order to be saved, you had to do good things. If you didn't do well, then sucks for you. You end up going to hell or you end up going to this place called purgatory. And the idea was that the church had really great saints, people that did a lot of good. And not only were they good enough to go to heaven, but they were so good that they had excellent extra good merits, the church had the ability to sell these good merits. And this is what the, this was called indulgences. So it wouldn't be hard to imagine how this practice of indulgences could really be abused by the system. Well, there's a first problem that number one, that practice is nowhere taught in scripture, so it's completely false. But number two, you could have entire groups of people that were just committing crimes who happened to be wealthy, maybe wealthy off of their crimes, and they could just basically pay the church and continue to execute those crimes without any fear of punishment or danger or any type of retribution. So as you can imagine, Martin Luther started to talk about these things and he eventually wrote this thing called the 95 Thesis. He nailed it on the door of a church and said, hey, these are some things that I'm not happy with. These are some things that I would like to, to have a discussion about and to try and change. And as you can imagine, the Catholic Church was less than excited. So at some point, they eventually brought him here to Worms where they had what's called the Diet of Worms. And Martin Luther was tried for his heresies and they basically, basically they wanted to kill him for his teachings. So right here behind me is the actual location where the Diet of Worms takes place. And surprisingly, they don't detain him. They don't kill him. Nothing happens. He actually just leaves the place free and, and he goes. Um, I'm told that this actually isn't the exact building because a while back the building burned down. So this is the location, but not the actual church that it took place in. Thank <laughs> you. 
So even though technically Martin Luther was able to leave the Diet of Rome without like any harm, he did kind of have to escape and disappear for a while. And the reason is because even though they let him leave safely, there was an edict issued by the Pope. They basically said not only was uh, he excommunicated, kicked out of the church, but also any good Catholic had the opportunity, if they wanted to, they could kill Martin Luther and there would be no punishment at all. So a couple of his friends, or at least sympathizers to his cause, uh, basically kidnapped Martin Luther and they hid him away for his own good. And they basically stole him away to a location where he stayed for about 300 days just to, you know, out of fear that he might be killed by the Pope. And so that's why we are actually right here. This is Wartburg Castle. This is where Martin Luther was pent up for 300 days. So of course this wasn't like a vacation for Martin Luther. In fact, the major thing that he did in his 300-ish days while here is to translate the Bible for the very first time into the language of the German people. And this was a really big deal because up to that point, uh, any anytime people wanted to learn more about God or learn more about the Bible, they were pretty much at the mercies of the priests who may or may not tell the truth about what the Bible speaks on. And many times these corrupt priests, priests would use their position of power in, in a way to kind of extort the people and to steal from them. Alright, so right here is Johnny. This is the guy that uh, invited me onto the trip, so thanks for having me. But we just finished the tour all around this this, uh, this palace, and uh, what'd you think? It was amazing. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty stunning. There are some amazing rooms that are super beautiful, but definitely the best room, I would say at least, was the room that we were able to see at the very end of the tour, where Martin Luther actually was translating the Bible. He was stuck in that room or in this area for about 300 days. Pretty incredible to see what, uh, what was going on there. Absolutely. I mean, all of this is stunning. Just to think that he did all that in 11 short months, I think it was. Yeah. Pretty incredible. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and try and land this plane. Uh, what are the things that we can learn from the life of Luther? Obviously, there are a lot of things that we can focus on, but uh, what I want to bring your attention to is namely this. It is super important not to raise a human being to like the level of like hero or God or whatever the case is. And it's also important not to have such a low estimate of yourself and to think that God can't use you. And here's why I believe that this is the case. He had many different faults. For example, Martin Luther was kind of really the hard on women and, and believes that husbands had the right to beat their wives and things like that. But also number two, one big complaint against Martin Luther was he was an anti-Semite, even encouraging people to like set a fire uh, Jewish peoples, their schools and, and their, their homes, and basically encourage persecution of Jewish people to show that they were, to, 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 to show that he was a Christian. Like it's, it's crazy things. And so it's important to have a balanced view on people and yourself. You know, every single person who God has used, uh, aside from Jesus, has been human to a fault in the sense that they have things that they do very well and also things that they don't do very well. So it's important when you look through history and you see these amazing things, you know, you read about Martin Luther or John Calvin, John Huss, uh, you even read about people in the Bible like Peter and, and Matthew or, or the different disciples. Every single one of them actually also did great things, but also had faults. The, the counterpoint to this is that while Martin Luther had a lot of issues, a lot of problems, clearly God was able to use him. People have one of two extremes that they fall into. Number one, they think, you know what, I'm so terrible, I'm so unholy, I'm so wicked that God can't possibly use me. Well, clearly God can use anyone. God can use a donkey, God can use a fish, God can use literally anything um, if they're willing. And then of course, the second thing is not to think too highly of yourself and to not do the difficult work of searching your own soul and say, you know what, where are the issues that maybe God is still wanting to work on me today? And so here, those are a couple takeaways from the life of Martin Luther to, to, to be encouraged by his faithful example where he was faithful and to be challenged to, to accomplish great things for God, but also to, to not neglect looking inwardly and say, you know what, God, where is it that you're still trying to reform my life? Where is it that you're still trying to grow me, to develop me, and to transform me to become more like Jesus?
So that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed our little tour of Germany and you enjoyed the story of Martin Luther. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving it a thumbs up. Go ahead and share it with a friend. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I have put out new videos every single Monday and Thursday. Again, many thanks to Panda Vida who's hosting these events. And if you'd like to go on some of their future tours, they're going to be doing a tour here in Europe as well in October, I believe. There will be a link to their contact information in the description below. Give them a, give them a check out. Uh, I think that you will enjoy the trip tremendously. But as I like to say, until next time, I'm that Christian vlogger and I want to encourage you to experience faith in the first person. God bless.